discourse. Now, so if we go back to, first of all, so content. How do I make sure at the content stage that I'm composing carefully? The first thing is I need to make sure that I'm organizing and categorizing my information. The second thing is I need to dot point my ideas. And number three is I need to talk my ideas through with as many people as you possibly can, with your supervisors, with your friends, with people on, at conferences, and constantly be in discussion with people and make sure that your information is ready and right and good. So often we think, oh, that student um, writing is rubbish, but it's not the writing that's rubbish, it's the ideas that are not well thought through. So if you really think through and talk and talk and talk and talk and dot point before you write, then you'll be, be perfect. Then at the editing stage, what do you have to do? Okay, you've written everything, you've written your full sentences. How are you going to make sure that your information is accurate, relevant, etc., etc., at the editing stage? How are you going to make sure it's all of these things at the self editing stage? It's all down on the paper. Now you're doing your first edit for content. What do you do? How do you edit for content? How do you read it? Yes? Aha, so I go back to my question and I check, am I answering my questions? So that's a really good thing. So that's back and forth. You're reading back and forth. You're going to your question, you're going to the chapter. You're going to the question, you're going to the chapter. And checking, that's a really good one. What you're also doing is you're checking, am I up to date? So you might be stop-start reading. You're reading and then you think, ha, huh, let me just check. Go and check some literature. Go and check that. Is that really what so-and-so said? Let me just check. On Facebook the other day, this very famous linguist who happens to be a Facebook friend of mine was ranting and raving about a conference he went to and a scholar, and he put a quotation mark like that, misrepresented his work, explained it incorrectly, and he was being very, very cross. So am I doing it in the correct way? And that's also, when you're doing that editing for um, content, it's very, very important to let someone else read it. Even if it's not your supervisor, let your friend who's in the same discipline read it and check, or read sections that you're not clear of. So particularly if you're quoting this particular um, person and whose name I will not mention, you should probably let someone else check, is that what that person really said? <laughs> okay, have I represented them correctly? A really key thing here is also often we make the mistake with um, secondary citations. Smith is talking about what Rogers said and we, and we read Smith but we don't read the original and then we make a misunderstanding of Smith's misunderstanding. Okay, that's a problem. So you might want to check the accuracy. Can I find the original? Can I double check? Are there other people that have also summarized what Smith is saying? Can I check? So it's a stop start reading and it's a back and forth reading for the content. Okay. And let's look at discourse. So, the first element for discourse is does my document have the appropriate macro structure? Macro structure means headings and subheadings. Does it have the appropriate sections? How do I know that? How do I know it has the appropriate sections in it? I'm at the composition stage. How do I know? Yes. Okay, what are the requirements of the journal? 
What are the requirements of my topic? What are all the parts of my topic? I always think the title of your topic should be like a, do you watch Austin Powers, The Spy, that one? The small version of himself, mini-me, <laughs> yes? Your title should be a mini-me version of your whole document. So are you, do you have all the comp parts of your title in the headings and subheadings? Do your headings and subheadings make sense? Do they have a meaning? I know, especially my science technology people, you like to write experiment one, experiment two. No, that's meaningless. Each heading needs to have a meaning, okay? Now, how can I make sure this is also at the, um, at the macro structure that it makes sense? One way is if you put down all your headings and subheadings down on the paper, you can sit with your supervisor or a friend and tell them the story of the document, just using that information. That at the end of a literature review, you should end on the gap or the contribution of your study. Because in the literature review, we always tell the same story. We always start with the problem. We show what is the evidence that it's a problem. We tell what other people know about the problem. And then we come to the gap. What don't they know? Or what is the innovation? So in this study, what do you think is the gap or the innovation? The new thing that this researcher has come up with? What is special about his study? Yes, and we can see it just from the structure. So we see, oh, bridal creeper is a terrible plant. It looks like this and this. We describe it as this, it fits here in the family tree. It looks like this and it's distributed all over Australia. It's a problem because the cows eat it and they get sick. Or oh, there could be many reasons, but it's a problem for that. It's come a long, long time in Australian history. It was introduced by the British settlers, of course, and it spread all over the country, causing problems. Okay, um, and it has a widespread and it's predicted it'll spread everywhere. We're trying to control it. We try to control it with mechanical ways, with machines, with biology, with putting insects that will eat it, and with chemicals. But we have a big problem on the Aboriginal lands. They are very remote and we can't reach them. So, till date, to date, no one has looked at this plant on the Aboriginal lands. See, I know nothing about plants. But I can figure out from this what is going on. So once you've got your literature categorized and organized, go and write yourself a really good table of contents that you're building on, building on, building on, and talk through your table of contents. Try and tell your friend the story, or tell your supervisor the story using the table of contents. Another way to check that it's correct is to give it to your friend who's in the same discipline and ask him or her to, to tell you the story of your dissertation. If they are completely wrong, then you probably don't have a good macro structure yet and you need to improve on your macro structure. Okay, so that's the first stage of things that you need to do is you need to get your macro structure right. So, for discourse marking, we say, does my text have the appropriate macro structure? Does it have all the important headings and subheadings? And for that, I look at the text type, the expectations of the discipline, but I also look at, does it tell the story, all the important bits in my story? Now, Henriette will be able to tell you Another thing that will really, really help you to know do you have the appropriate macro structure is to look at theses in your discipline from last year and the previous year. Look what are all the sections, what are all the headings and subheadings that they have in the documents. Now, I won't ask Henriette, I'll ask you guys, where will you find it? Where will you find the theses? 
Has anyone found a thesis example yet? Yes? It is online, yes. You might, might find physical copies in your library. Your supervisor might have some examples from previous students. But you will find it online. Where? Okay. Where? All right, I let tell them. Okay. Okay. So you can go and find examples and look at them. Many people will say, yes. Okay, yes, can we repeat that? Okay. The University of the Free State, you go onto the university website, then go to library, and then you log in and go to electronic resources, and then you get a layout, and there's a, a, a subsection that says dissertations and theses. And then also it's under either the alphabetical, you know, the, the discipline, or under the alphabet of the writers. That's for our, uh, for those submitted University of the Free State. International ones are available under ProQuest as you go under, you know, Academic Search Complete, ProQuest. But for a start, you probably want to start with the University of Free State ones mm -hmm. so that you can see what is common in your discipline area. Now, many people say, but I'm special, I, I'm different, my thesis is different. But you will find your thesis does have things in common with other people in your discipline.